Hello and welcome to First Look. I'm Young John and today we're going to look at Rocat's new Vulcan 2 mini keyboard. It's a 65% keyboard as you can tell from this diminutive cute little size and the smaller brother to the recently announced Vulcan 2 Max. Uh, they both use the new Titan 2 optical switches. Uh, but before we get ahead of ourselves, let's uh, open this box up to show you what exactly comes in the box. This is the official box. You see the Rocat Vulcan 2 Mini on the upper left-hand corner, an image of the keyboard itself, which is white. I think it also comes in black, and the world's first dual LED linear gaming switch. Here is the back of the box. This is what it looks like. And let's open this guy up. You'll need a knife to open up the safety seals on the left and the right here. which reveals the lovely keyboard in white. Here's the keyboard. Here's your cable, your silica gel, and your paperwork. That's everything you get in the box. Your keyboard, your cable, and your paperwork. Here's the keyboard. It comes protected in bits of plastic around where the silver edges line up. So let's remove that. <laughs> If we look around on the top, you see a port for the USB-C cable. And uh, this thing is super light. It's made mostly of plastic. And underneath, you have thick rubber feet here on top here too to keep it from, you know, moving anywhere. This is solid. It's not going anywhere. You can have three different levels. You can have it completely flat or you can put up the smaller foot like this or the larger foot like that. So let's connect the cable. We'll take the USB-C end and stick it into this port. And uh, there you have the cable that's braided and it's 1.8 meters long, I think. It's almost six feet long. It's really long. So it'll connect to my laptop. And voila, it lights up. It's very, very colorful. Look at these lights, they're pretty bright. Looking at this keyboard, even though this is 65%, I see almost all the keys from a full keyboard. F keys from 1 to F12. On the top row, you have delete, insert, home, end. You have print, scroll, and break. You even have media keys. Uh, Z, X, and C has play, pause, left and right. You have audio controls like mute, volume down, and volume up. You even have brightness controls. Light off, light on lower intensity, brighter intensity. This is really great. You have access to almost everything you need. You can even cycle through profiles by holding function and uh, the tab key. And we have, what is this? Profile two, profile three, profile four, profile five. And every time I press the function key, you notice that it changes color. Now that's the dual LEDs. Uh, so every time you hold it, like this, a second LED lights up to show you uh, which keys actually can do something. I don't think they tell you in the instructions, but you can change colors too. See how this whole thing is green? Function and up will change it to something else, like blue, function up, purple, even deeper purple, deeper purple. <laughs> I just turned it off. Yeah, and then white, I'm gonna go back to green because that was the original color. First things first, this is a gaming keyboard. It's got NK rollover, polling rate of 1000 Hz, and 100% anti-ghosting. The big piece of news here is the new Titan 2 optical switches, which this keyboard is based on. These switches are now lubed, they have dual LEDs, and they now use standard cross stems, making these compatible with any set of third-party keycaps. So you can switch out keycaps with a different set if you like. But why would you want to do that when these keycaps are made for this? They're really super low profile, super thin. I happen to like them very much. They're really, really fast and go well together uh, with these switches. You almost can't feel them because they're so light. The similarities from the first Titan Opticals are that it's still 1.4 millimeter actuation point, which is super fast. And it has a life cycle of 100 million key presses. It sits on an aluminum plate, which gives it an elegant look and feel. Uh, but being that it's a smaller keyboard, it doesn't have the heft of uh, the Vulcan 2 Max. Uh, that Max really felt like, you know, it was the big boss. 
But this one, it's so light that it feels like a younger sister, you know? Uh, the voice is a little bit higher, it's not really hefty, but it's solid. And I'll show you what I mean by doing some tests. First test is the typing test. Here's a typing test for the Rocat Vulcan 2 Mini. Please put on your headphones. I was pressing the backspace a lot because basically this keyboard is for playing games, not really for typing. So if you're gonna spend most of your days typing, this probably isn't the right kind of keyboard. You want like more like brown switches instead of these linear fast ones. Uh, so for gaming, these are great. And uh, that leads us into our second test, which is gaming. So this keyboard is NK rollover, so you can hit like four or five keys at the same time, which I'll attempt to do with my left hand. Oh, that sucks. I'm almost dead. <laughs> this is not good. What caught me? Oh, there was a spider hiding somewhere. <laughs> oh, man. For gaming, these keys are super fast and they're buttery smooth too. This doesn't sound or feel as deep and commanding as the Vulcan 2 Max, but then again, this little guy is so portable, you can just throw it into a backpack for a LAN party and uh, it wouldn't weigh anything. I'm gonna start up Rocat Swarm, and that's the software to customize lighting, macro keys, and so on. If you're not sure where to download Swarm or how to set up macros, we have a whole bunch of Swarm tutorials that you can watch. Uh, we'll leave links down below in the notes for you. Up here is the Vulcan 2 Mini keyboard that we have connected. You can go into settings by clicking on this cog. Under general, you can search now for the latest updates and firmware. And once it downloads, go to the update center and you can click on update. It'll appear somewhere in this area here. Let's get out of there. These are the general options, but the most interesting thing for most people is the key illumination. You have five different profiles, which you can select from here or on the keyboard from function and tab. Right now we're on profile number five. Keyboard is green, the simulator is green. On the left side, you can select a different kind of lighting. Let's go to wave. This is what'll happen. And it doesn't happen until you click apply. Now you can see it happening on the keyboard itself. 
or you can do a custom mode where you can select different keys or actually here the gaming keys are this W A S N D you can select different kinds of keys I'm gonna select just the gaming keys here and make it a red and once I go and maybe oh, yeah I want to fully lit and I'll apply you can see A S W and D are in red color now this is if you want to do specific colors for specific keys but in general I just leave it at fully lit and oh it changed colors because the theme is different now but I had it for green but Let's go back to default by pressing this return to default key here. I'm gonna go okay, it was green. And to make it work for the keyboard, I'm gonna go to apply. And voila, the keys are now once again green. Also noteworthy are the four different zones. So I could change this to a red and this one to a blue and this one to an orange and apply this. And uh, you have kind of red, white, and blue type of Christmas colors. <laughs> red, green, and blue Christmas colors if you want. Uh, so you can do it by four zones if you wish. And we will reset that now to something that's a little bit less gaudy. <laughs> the second interesting thing is key assignments. This is where you can set macros and all the other basic functional keys. One important thing is the expansion of Easy Shift. You see this Windows key, when you press Windows key, the Windows thing pops up, but set it to gaming mode, function, and Windows key, and even if you press Windows key, it doesn't pop up by accident while you're gaming. Now, Easy Shift is mapping of secondary keys. So it used to be that you were only able to map keys on the left side of the keyboard, but now they've expanded it. So if I press the caps lock, you see the colors in blue. Those are mappable to something else if you want. Uh, you cannot map preset one. So media keys like play left and right, it doesn't turn blue because you can't set that. Same thing with the volume keys, print, scroll lock, and break. Those stay as is, as is the F keys. But everything else, the dual LED shows you what you can remap. And this is the keyboard view. You can click on each and every key to see if it's mapped to anything else. If you want to see what every key does, you click on list view and it lists every single key and their secondary function. So number one is F1, number three is F3, so on and so forth. And you can remap it or make macros by going to my macros. And we also have a tutorial for that. So you can check that out if you want to make macros for certain games. That covers Swarm for the Vulcan 2 Mini. Not a lot of crazy options, but very useful customizations for lighting and macros. If anything, this keyboard is super efficient. So that pretty much covers it for the Vulcan 2 Mini keyboard. Now, what do I think of it personally? I like it just because it's so small and if you don't have a lot of desktop space, this is like a perfect size. Plus you get almost every function of a normal keyboard anyway. So it's super efficient. The feeling of the keys are really nice. Uh, I do prefer the sound of the thumps, the heavy thumps of the bigger brother, the um, Vulcan 2 Max. But this guy, for the portability of it, you can throw it into your backpack if you want to take it to the library even. This guy comes with a two-year warranty and is also available in black color. So if you want to check out prices, we'll leave Amazon affiliate links down below in the notes. Uh, if you haven't yet, please take a moment now to subscribe to the first look, Look With Two Zeros YouTube channel. Shall see you all again next time.